So I'm going to tell you a bit about manager modules in a very kind of high level way. <laughs> I also didn't have much time to prepare this presentation, 45 minutes last night, but anyway. Um, the whole idea is, I, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with how Ceph works and the fact that we have a Ceph manager daemon, but um, the idea of the Ceph man manager itself is basically for monitoring and management while at the same time allowing for an interface to be an interface for external tools. For instance, the Ceph dashboard runs on the, on the Ceph manager, but we also have an orchestrator that kind of has multiple backends that will allow us, for instance, to interface with DeepC, with uh, Rook. Um, and it also, there, there's a bunch of modules nowadays, and one of them, for instance, will allow us to plug into some disk failure prediction service, things like that. And it also aggregates most of the, um, the data, the statistics data that the cluster is producing. And it's also nowadays mostly responsible for showing the, or to provide the health data and the health checks for a bunch of components in Ceph. Um, I, technically, the, the clients themselves are also connecting to, to the manager, depending on their purpose, but for health and all of that kind of stuff, it, they will grab that from the manager, they will still speak to the monitors, the monitors will speak to the managers, the OSDs speak with both. Um, and, but this is the, is a talk about the, the the modules themselves, not the, the manager. So I will just focus on the modules. And the manager, to support this kind of modules, they implemented a, a very neat um, thing with CPython, in which each module will be running on its own sub-interpreter, which apparently is something that is may or may not go away, I'm not entirely sure, but... We're the only users. Huh? We're the only users. <laughs> We're the only users of it, apparently. So a solution will have to be found to deal with that. But the, the neat thing about this whole thing is that now we can have Python code running with, on the manager, which is basically C++, while having access to all kinds of juicy information, like the, the in real time, like the maps, the um, health information, the PG statistics, the and people are doing all kinds of neat things with it. For instance, the Prometheus exporter is exporting data to Prometheus, which can then be, well, do whatever you want with it. Um, implementing a, a manager module is fairly straightforward. We basically extend the manager module um, base class, which handles all the ca all the hard work. We really don't have to deal with much, and it will basically call out certain functions that the module needs to to implement to do its stuff. Essentially, we will implement a handle command function to handle commands that we pass on the CLI. Uh, a shutdown function that will be called when the manager or the plugin it's being um, shut down. A notify which will basically grab, uh, receive every single notification that the manager is providing, including health information. And serve is basically main to some extent. Um, so anything outside of the basic initialization of that class should be done in serve, which will be called frequently, so, um, well, some care may be needed there. Handling commands is kind of straightforward itself. I'm sorry for the contrasts. This is a, <laughs> a screenshot of my Vim. <laughs> um, but the, the idea 
is simply that we declare which commands we we want to use and then the handle command will be passed those commands and we will simply um, parse them. However, Ricardo, I think, implemented a, a new version of how to do uh, command parsing or command handling, in which case we just have a, a decorator that specifies the, um, the command itself and we can simply use that function. The, the manager will call that function directly, which reduces a bunch of the, um, how do I say, um, cruft in the, in the module because we don't have to describe all the commands and then have a handle, com handle command function that's just calling out a bunch of other functions. And it's neat because even, even in this case, the arguments, if we didn't have the arguments, we would not have to specify them. The in buff is basically what we provide on the CLI as an input file. If any of you are familiar with Ceph, Ceph the Ceph tool will allow you to imp um, pass files with a dash i so you can just put the, the file there and it will just send the file in the with the command so the in buff is basically where you pass, pass bulk data in the CLI the, the the thing is I while I was trying to figure out how to get into understanding the the plugins and whatnot I had no idea what to do so I basically made blinking lights for that, I used the uh, Philips U I had at home. I have the bridge here. I brought some LEDs. I have a V-Start cluster. So this is not something that I'm using in production on anything yet. But um, I also had a very patient flatmate. <laughs> um, and I just created a, a very basic uh, module that will allow me to uh, blink lights or change the colors of lights depending on the cluster status. I over-engineered the configuration file. Again, this kind of really sucks. I'm, I'm sorry. But basically the, the file allows us to specify a bridge with a bridge name, the, the bridge access, uh, address. The, the U itself needs a user, which I still need to implement that thing, but it's basically you press the button, call a, an endpoint of the, the REST API, which the, the use in this case is very neat because they expose a, a neat API that we can just call via REST. And then it has this concept of groups, basically it's groups of lights. And I have this crew, group called Rack, where, on which I decided, okay, so, for this status, uh, so this will be health status. When this, when I see this status, I want you to turn think colors to green, yellow, and red. And depending on each one, I'm specifying whether I want a solid color or I, if I want them blinking. Um, <clears throat> So far, this module only supports green, yellow, and red because you actually have to specify the U, the saturation, and the brightness. And I'm very lazy to do more than just three colors. And then we basically set up the bridge on serve. Um, like the, the, the actual initiation of the bridge, connections, and all of that. We use notify to grab the, the health information and hopefully when we shut down the manager, the turns will go off, will turn, turn, turn off. It may not happen today, simply because I was fiddling with the code yesterday night, and that's usually not a good idea before a demo. Uh, so let's try to do this without things breaking too much. So right now I have a vstart cluster which you guys are not Seeing and I have no idea how 15 minutes left still. <laughs> Do you know how I can put put this on the screen? Um, just just mirror your screen. Okay. <coughs> no, this is a multi monitor add on. Well, it's you just just the the ah, but then I, I won't. Okay. 
I dragged the shell where though? Where's my mouse pointer is on the other screen. Oh, okay, so I can just do this? Yes. Oh there we go. Uh, okay, so I actually have a VSART cluster here running. And at, on the other end, I have the DHCP running because this is a very weird setup. So right now, the, the, the cluster is on health OK. And I have this neat script that I just had yesterday that okay, I can show it to you. I think, no, oh, Jesus, what am I doing, blinking lights, so basically what I'm doing is forcing weird <laughs> statuses on the cluster, uh, so I know that a warning will be issued if I set uh, a flag on the OSD map that is kind of a bad idea, like saying that the OSDs are not allowed to be in the distribution, that will turn the, uh, the state to warning. And I, if I mess with some of the, the full ratio flags, I will get errors out of it. So this is basically what I'm doing. So let's just turn this to warn, and hopefully this will change lights just a bit. OK? Oh, I, so. Yeah, okay. So this is now a warning. I'm, I'm incredibly proud of this. It, it's, <laughs> it's very simple and very useless, but <laughs> it's light. No. What? What does safe health look like now? Ah, that's a good point. Repeat the question. Uh, sorry, what does safe health look like now? And it just shows a health warn. No in flag is set. So. Yeah, that's, that's it. Uh, so let's go with, OK, again. And it will turn green, yay. OK, so health is OK again, because you don't have that pesky flag set anymore. And let's just force this to R. And it's. Blinking. <laughs> um, so yeah, the the cluster health will be in R because the full ratios are out of order. Um, and let's put this in OK again because I, I'm still trying to figure out how to just keep it blinking. I'm very certain that I can just force this on serve um, by keep just telling the, the bridge keep this blinking until someone has a seizure. Um, but yeah, let's move this to, to OK so that we can <coughs> not freak out. Um, OK, can I move this back here? OK. So. This was for the, the, the fun part of the presentation, but I was told that I had a profit there. Um, so where to go from here, basically? I actually have a, a few things in mind. I want to have the, the colors pulsating while the um, pulsating, pulsing, pulsating, um, whatever. You get the gist. While the PGs are recovering, like going between the a yellowish and a, a bluish until things get to uh, bright green again. I would very much like, and I don't think it's very that very hard to make this crush map aware, so that we could ideally, in a perfect world, have bulbs on top of racks, and actually show which racks or it, where the OSDs are going, a wire or which OSDs are unbalanced or where in the data center or wherever things are not as they should be. Because everyone likes blinking LEDs anyway, so why not lights as well? Um, and given that the manager also allows for module 
communication between them using a very obscure function that should definitely be renamed Ricard. Um, we could grab an inventory from the, say, the orchestrator once that's actually working or things like that. And we, or we could have the orchestrators themselves just say, okay, blink this OSD or this rack somewhere and we could just blink things. Obviously, I'm using Philips Hue, but I'm sure there's a bunch of other things that also provide REST APIs. This was just the hardware I had available. And I, in no way, am advocating for people to do things with Philips. They don't pay me to say those things. So, questions. And I still have 10 minutes, so either it's either questions or a break. You choose. You choose, you decide, I'm okay either way. So, no? Okay, we have two apparently. Repeat the questions, yes. So could we also have a speaker uh, that uh, tells us what is the warning or the error? If you find some way to modulate or transcribe things, Sure, why not? Yeah, text to speech. Yeah, why not? It's not. It's not that hard. Uh, that was not the purpose of this one. What? I repeated. It. I didn't repeat the question. Okay. So the question was it whether we could have a, basically a text to speech um, for the health warnings. Yes. You get the health warning. So the health warning it comes actually like the, the health warnings we would get on any other part of Ceph. It's a JSON with the health status and all the checks. So for every single thing that is wrong with the cluster, we will get um, a status message and the state itself, like PG degraded or OSD down or something like that. So we could technically just grab that information. We could put that on a, a text-to-speech thingy and blast that on your sysadmin room or something. Lens, you also raised your hand. I'm not sure if you still want to ask anything. I forgot the question. Ah, it's fine. But it was about um, network Yeah. To be on the same network right. No, uh, so it, it, the bridge needs to be somewhere in the network. But yeah, well, <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. Um, it's uh, the, the question was whether the manager and the bridge needed to be in the same network. The answer is yes, or find a way to expose the, the, the REST API of the bridge to the manager. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, please. How does the manager deal with a module that either stalls in serve or crashes or does something otherwise untoward? The question is, <laughs> how does the manager deal with <laughs> A module that crashes or does something into words. Okay, in my experience, what's happening is that the manager will output, a, well, a lot of obscure information that will make it very hard to debug what's wrong with your module. But otherwise, given it's running on its own subinterpreter, it should not affect anything. I am told that the notify function where I'm actually dealing with REST API calls should not be used in that way because it's supposed to be a very quick uh, a very quick call and that uh, fun um, other modules more complex like the dashboard they have their own notification queue that will eventually deal with that stuff I was lazy and also I 
I was not doing this for for a lot of complexity and all of that. But the um, the I, I I'm assuming that if well I, I actually have seen it when the bridge is turned off, the notify function and the manager rules go haywire because it can't establish a connection, so the module keeps throwing problems and blocking the manager itself not so much because I keep I still keep getting notifications so I'm guessing the manager is have a bunch of other threads that are just calling into the module so it should not be affected but that doesn't mean that it will not cause some some complications basically because it still we still have a bunch of modules running on the manager and I'm guessing that things can go wrong, but other than that, I can't speak from experience. If that answer was not satisfying, we can, I can point you to people that will <laughs> very easily answer your question, as long as he looks up <coughs> from his screen. Yes, please. The question was, I mentioned something about Python going away. Yeah, you said the, the, in, uh, the internal C Python. Okay, so okay, I get it. Uh, so, so apparently the C Python libraries uh, or the community around it realized that not not many people use subinterpreters, so they are. I think Ricard would be the, the best person to actually answer this. Yeah. Do you want to? Uh, so the, the, the question itself is about the subinterpreters and the impact that not having them will have on the Ceph manager. Yeah. So the and you may need to turn off the mic. I'm not sure if it's uh, turned so off. So the, the okay. problem that we are currently facing is that um, we are using these this sub-interpreters feature of CPython, where you can have uh, sub-interpreters, so each module is, is ro running on its own sub-interpreter, and some of the modules use some libraries that are um, that are built with Cython, okay? and the Cython uh, guys have removed the support for sub-interpreters in the release 0 0.29, which breaks our and we're working on in a, in a solution for, for, for this problem. But the, the modules themselves are not going away. The support for yeah. Python is not going away. It's just a solution is being worked on. And until then, we are just forcing a, an older <coughs> version of C, uh, C Python. I don't think we will have Well, thanks, Joao. Thank you. You're very kind.